what's up youtube welcome to more trades welcome to the channel hope everyone's doing well and your trades are going good and you're preserving your capital and making more profits and losses now before i get into the chart make sure to like the videos uh, if you like the content subscribe to the channel and join the free discord which the link will be in the channel and in the video description it's already in the channel description i'll add it to this video description uh, where I post my trade setups sometimes and I also uh, give ideas on the next possible trades and what I see on the market sometimes even when I'm not posting a video I do that because it's much faster and quicker and easier now what I see over here is that Bitcoin is in an in a pennant or an Elliott wave triangle in ABC. We came into the triangle with large volume showing that the possibility we came from down with volume. There's a high probability we break to the upside. And if we look at the RSI on the 30 minute time frame, you will see that we are having some sort of a triangle in the RSI over here. So they match. And the only anomal anomaly is that over here on the price action, we have a low and we have a higher, high, a higher low. But in RSI, we have a low and a lower low. This is on the 30 minute time frame. That may not be a problem because you want to see some bullish divergence. This is hidden bullish divergence. That in indicates that we might be pushing to the upside. And now that we have that, we might go up to the top of the trend line, hitting a D point come down to the E and that will only indicate that we might be having this. We complete the E, we go up and we break the highs. Now this is a coin base chart. It's different than the futures. The high on the coin base was 21,321, but uh, we did not take the previous high. Unlike on the futures chart, we broke the previous high already. But on Coinbase, because it's not manipulated by future contracts and all that, you get a clear picture of Elliott Wave count and all that. The high over here on Coinbase was 21,478. Uh, 21, yeah, the high was 21,478. Now, we may come up, take the highs, uh, get to the 21,6. Uh, very possible then we make the other moves that are coming now I want to show you this this is not a hundred percent guaranteed but it is to prepare you of what could happen next we have the 233 EMA on the daily at 22,037 going back to the 30 minute we have seen that at the moment we put in the C <coughs> we are coming up for the deep possibly as we are recording this then we might expect an e down and as you can see volume is declining in this triangle and that's what you would like to see uh, as you approach the apex declining volume then that's when you get your explosive move to the upside taking out the 21.5 21.6 it will also be reflected in the futures uh, charts then this third wave up this huge third wave as you remember we were counting this as a possible third wave all the way up here that third wave will be completed then what happens next i'm giving you these ideas so you could be prepared of what to expect next then we could have a drop that could take us anywhere as low as uh even 18.8 but i'm looking i'm gonna i'm gonna play it on support and resistance we have 19900 as a level of horizontal support Next comes the 19, yeah, 19,300. The lower one is the 18,8. 18,8 would be here, sorry. So these levels would be my next point. So what I'm thinking, a trade setup idea could be, okay, I'm not going to trade it here. Once I see a breakout to the upside, confirming that I'm going in to complete the fifth of the third, so I can complete the third bigger wave, then that's where my short entry will be coming if I see a reaction, then a pull down to the 19.9 or 18.8. And if I, uh, if I notice a reaction there, then I know there is a possibility that this move is down and we're going up for a bigger fifth wave. Well, the fifth wave might not be that big, but it could take us up to the 23K. That's a possibility. That is one scenario I'm looking at. 
Another scenario, <coughs> I'm looking at, at the immediate future, we could be doing this. Let me get rid of that and get rid of these lines. We could be doing this. We came up, our third wave is complete, and we're coming down in a fourth wave in an ABC. And if we're coming down ABC, same levels of support, 19.9, I'll be looking at. Now, this ABC would say uh, that we completed. This is our fifth of the third. Uh, somewhere along here, maybe was our fourth. Then we had, uh, uh, th this is, yeah, this, this move up could have been a fifth, but it's too big for a fifth. That's why I'm looking at it as a th possible third. If we see we had an extended fifth wave, then we had, if we have an extended fifth wave, then expect a very shallow uh, wave four retracement. That means we won't dump that much before continuing higher. But if we say this was a fifth, then this is a fourth, third, second, and first. Now, uh, our first wave, if we take a Fibonacci retracement of that and try to figure out uh, where are we going to get a retracement? Now, what I don't like here, there's a lot of one twos, uh, but I will start from this low and take a fib retracement from there. We had a one two, I'll take it from this. There's a lot of one twos. This is for calculating the higher degree. You see, we have other levels of retracement to worry about. We even have the 0.5 at 18. Eight. You see, I was talking about the 18.8.5 fib for the bigger retracement of a wave four. So if we end that ABC scenario, we're done with wave three and we're straight away going to come down. It is possible we could come first level 21, 2136, 19400, and 18800. Keep those levels in mind. mind. Mark them out in your chart and watch as we go down. How does price react? But if we have, this would mean we had a fifth wave that is very extended. We might have a shallow wave four that could take us only to the 20,136 to bounce off and go higher. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's the zone I'm thinking about. That's one trade idea that I'm thinking about. So a trade idea, if we're going to break out in that pennant to the upside, I would see the reaction above the 21,500. 21473, I believe it was. I'll see how is the price reacting at that point. And if we're getting any good reaction over here, 20,000, 21,470. If there's no reaction, then I'll be waiting for higher. But if I get a reaction, <clears throat> then I know there's a possibility we might be turning right now. Then what happens? I short it to support. Once I get to support, I watch the reaction and see, is it a strong reaction? Am I getting a wick, small bodies, increase in volume, liquidations, and are we reversing? Then it's probably time to consider closing your shorts or taking profit. And possibly you could open along in this zone and have your stop below, depending on your risk tolerance. If you're gonna open a, 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 a long from 20,100, can you withstand having a stop loss at 18.5? Depends on your, on your position size and how much leverage and your risk tolerance. What's your capital? But it is a good trade setup, but it needs either a very small position size, uh, maybe a big position side with low leverage, or you have to have deep pockets or big capital. Uh, so those are trade setups ideas. Now, uh, if I want to add something to the chart so we can see our EMAs, and see how much confluence we have with them and our levels uh, that I just drawn over here. We would have the 50 EMA at the moment at around the 18.8. So if we came down, it would simply be a retest of the 50. You see how overexpanded we are? We're so overexpanded away from the 50, it's due a retrace. That short would be a nice one if it works out. That would, from here to the 50 at the moment, that's $2,000 down. That's almost a 10% drop, if not more. Uh, it's less, but almost a 2% drop down. 
But as time goes by, the 50 MA will move higher, so the distance will be less, and you'll be coiled against the 50 and losing momentum, and possibly that's when you get your drop. Just like now, see how we are so close and we're just hugging into it. Sometimes we drop over there. Now, that's my, my, my thoughts on uh, Bitcoin and uh, trading ideas. Overall, I mentioned to you on the dis in the Discord that several indicators on a higher time frame are pointing out that we may have a significant move up. They're having bullish crossovers on the MACD two week. Uh, we have uh, on the Keltner channel, I'll just show you that, uh, KC. I'll show you my Keltla channel over here. You will notice that Bitcoin is doing something it hasn't done in a very long time. So we need to be aware of that. Despite me saying that I see us going lower, we need to be aware of the moves that are happening now. And that I'm not always right. On the Keltna channel, as you can see, <coughs> on the daily time frame, I have so many lines over here. Let me go back to Coinbase. Base is a cleaner chart. On the Keltner channel, you can see that we broke out. We have three daily candles above. What's the significance of that? Throughout this entire drop to the downside, we were getting rejected at the top of the Keltner channel. Now I have also lines over here. I have this trend based FIB times that I laid out. They work very well. I need to uh, maybe do some new ones. They tell you when price is going to react. It helps when you when you have an Elliott wave count and you have trend-based FIB time, it helps you project where could you go next. As you can see, I projected, I'm projecting 25K was our wave four and we're going down the wave five. How we get there, still a mystery. Once we are above 25K, then this wave four will be invalidated and I would consider possibly it was a wrong count or it's done or the count was finished, wave five was finished. Now, as you see, all the whole way going down, we never opened and closed candles outside of the Keltner uh, channel. As you see over here and now today, uh, for the past three days, we opened and closed three candles. That's very bullish. I mean, even in this bull run, you weren't getting as big candles opening and closing outside the Keltner channel. I mean, look at that. This is, we're in 2021 now. Uh, look at the candles pointing out of the Keltner. Okay, then we'll go to today and compare what are we seeing. How far does this chart go? Uh, here we got one big one over here it didn't open and close outside and one small one over here now today's price action or the should i say the past three days you've had this significant three day overextended it may mean a good thing it may mean uh we are overextended and we need to come down and come down soon uh Looking at uh, the Bollinger Band on the daily, how many days are we out? Same thing. Look at that. That's overexpanded. Now, let's see what happens when we are overexpanded. Uh, you see how the Bollinger Band is expanding and we opened. Uh, maybe we'll find it at the lows of uh, 2021 over here. Let's go here. Yeah, somewhere here. Over here. Even over here, we didn't get much uh, days out of opening and closing out of uh, the Bollinger Band when we started our next bull cycle. Uh, uh, this is very stretched, in my opinion. We're due for a good retrace, maybe possibly even back to the mean over here at 17.539 today. Yeah, that's on the daily. On the weekly, how does it look? Okay, we have resistance at 22,043. That will coincide with my daily 233 EMA at 22,045, I believe. Let's uh, go back and bring that EMA. 
So we have a level of confluence there, the upper band of the Bollinger Band, uh, the upper boundary of the Bollinger Band, and I have my uh, 233 EMA coming in at 2237, and my Bollinger Band on the weekly is at 22.43. So this level will be an interesting one. If we're able to break the 22,000, as I told you, 22,800 was the next high I believe we could go to. And we'll have the 233 EMA on the weekly coming at 23.551. You have to look at different time frames. You can't stick to one time frame. You need to look at confluences and find relations on different time frames. Over here, we were going to have a bearish cross, a death cross. 50 EMA and 200 EMA, but it's slightly curving up now because of this bullish week. So if this wasn't a bullish week, we might have had that cross. Anyways, guys, that's all my update for Bitcoin. Hope you liked it. If you did, smash the likes. Join the Discord completely free. And uh, yeah, subscribe to the channel. More trades, I'm out.